Hello everyone, welcome to NAM 2021. My name is Derek Floyd, one of the hosts here at the IK Multimedia booth. I hope you've made some time to stop by and see some of the great new products we're showing here this year, like the analog hardware synthesizer, Uno Synth Pro. This one's gonna be a game changer for sure. And the update to our incredible Amplitude software, Amplitude 5, added in VIR technology, volume impulse response, this one's gonna help your sound go even better. But in this particular room, we're going to talk to a Grammy award-winning producer. He uses our product, the iLoud MTM monitors, to mix on almost all of his projects. And he's worked with people like Drake, to Mickey Minaj, to John Legend, just to name a few. And he can take a few minutes to share how he's made MTMs his main monitor all this time. And I think you'll enjoy it. So please sit back with me and relax, and let's talk to Super Dupes. Are you on the other end for me, brother? Are you there? I'm here, yo. I'm here. Man, there he is. Good to see you, bro. <laughs> Good to see you too, Derek. <laughs> I feel like I haven't happy, seen you like in years. Happy New Year. Happy nice New Year, man. Last year. <laughs> Can I, right? Welcome, Nam 2021. How you? You getting away from this Corona? You staying safe? Yeah, I'm staying safe, away from this Rona. Um, and I'm in, I'm in the, the crib. You know what I mean? Um, working, doing my thing, um, living my best life. Yeah, <laughs> always, always, man. Look at you, always, man. But, but, um, IK multimedia stuff though is, um, to me, been a part of my life for probably decades now since the first product that you guys came out with, which are most T Rex and wow. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have been an IK fan. This was this was pre me before I got to you. See, exactly. Well, <laughs> when when you were there now, it was a Philharmonic Orchestra. Philharmonic, yep. <laughs> Uh, what was it called? It was called Sample Tank. Sample uh, Tank, yes, yeah, see? We're going back. Uh, We're aging yeah, ourselves yeah, here. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, so I've, I've been there with IK from 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 the get, one. man. Yes, sir. Then, you're, you're a day one fan. Day one fan. But I am a fan, like, super fan of you guys' monitors. So, man, let's just jump in and, and, and let these people hear what's going on for NAMM 2021. You know, you're a Grammy award-winning producer who's worked work with Drake, uh, Mary J. Blige, John Legend. I mean, on and on and on and on and on. And, you know, how do you feel as a producer and how do you stay relevant in the time in the game? Because there's so much that's changed over the music industry. How do you position yourself and stay relevant all these years? How I stay relevant all these years is that I don't, I don't follow anybody. I just do my own thing. I don't copy anybody because chances are if you hear something on the radio and he's like, all right, cool, I'm going to make something like that. That sound is already old in the music industry because chances are that song was made a year before you even heard it on the radio. So mm -hmm. what I do is I just tend not to listen to anybody or copy anybody's style. I'd rather create the trend than follow the trend. I and, like it. And, and I always just try to reinvent myself every so often. I like this year is one of those reinvention years for me. I don't know where I'm going yet, but how <laughs> would I know where I'm going if I don't actively do it? You know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's, it's and, the start and of the year. Of course, of course. And is there a, I mean, you've worked with in different genres. Is there a particular genre you like the most that you feel most comfortable in? Or is this hip hop just where you kind of sit down? Where do you feel the most? Um, well, the genre that everybody kind of placed me into is reggae, which, you know, reggae is my heart, but I literally don't put a limit to myself. I am up to the challenge for anything. Doesn't matter what it is. I can't tell you that there is a type of music that I can't stand. I appreciate all music for what it is, you know? Mm -hmm. Some some music I do prefer more than others, um, but but reggae is mainly what I am known for, but I can do anything. More so urban. reggae, and, and of course we know the island music, is that where you got your start? Is that where you became the producer? Or, or where did that all begin? Where did the first Super Dupes track start off? Well, for those of you that don't know, even though I might look Filipino, I'm actually Chinese Jamaican. I was born in Jamaica. <laughs> so I'm from the islands. I'm the, you know, I was influenced by reggae just growing up in the islands. And... That became a part of my sound. So um, 
I don't know. I just I, I just breathe reggae, so I, <laughs> I understand it better than everything else, even though I can do everything else. Mm, mm, mm. And who would you say maybe were your influences as a producer when you first got started? Who were the ones you went, wow, I want to be that. I want to get to that. Um, of course, you have like the Steely and Cleavy. That's the reggae producers. You have Sly and Robbie. You have like people like Timberland. You have Pharrell. You have Teddy Riley. You have Quincy Jones. You have you just have a lot of different people. People like Salam Remy was a heavy influence for me too. Like while growing up, because Salam Remy did a bunch of the things where, <clears throat> while I was growing up, he merged reggae with hip hop, and mm. I. I even though it was done before him, but he did it in such a way to where um, I was just amazed. And that was a huge part of my influence. And I, I started out as a DJ first, and then I transitioned mm. into producing. And how long have you been in the industry so far? What's, what's the year mark? Where are you at? Industry producing or just industry <laughs> overall, even since I've been a DJ? Well, overall, man, where you been? How long has it been for you? About 30 years. 30 years, man. You're not that old. You look like, you look like you're 25. I was two when I started. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. Well, man, it's great to have you doing 30 years, and we keep hearing great music from you. So as the Grammys can pile up and you keep doing great stuff, uh, you've had lots of components in your repertoire to help you stay creative. How important is a monitor to the, how you create your sound? The monitor is everything because if you can't hear, you can't like work on it properly. So it's like a, a lens on a camera. Even if you have a good body and you have a cheap lens, it's not going to look good when you take the picture. Or even like, say, if you're editing film, how are you going to get the colors right if your monitor, computer monitor is like cheap or you don't get the right light from it? And, and so basically the monitor to me, that's, that's your ears. You know what I mean? That's, that's, mm -hmm. that's how you hear to make the best judgment that you could possibly get. And that's how, that's why the MTMs are very important to me because mm. no matter what <clears throat> I do, I don't have to question the sound on it. Like if I work on it there, I don't even have to listen to it on the car because that's how much I trust the monitors. Oh, no car test for you, huh? They just work. The MTMs erase the purpose of the car test. They just erase everything, but, and especially <laughs> with the arc. The arc mm. system that you guys have built in, I even went a mm. step ahead. Even though the arc system that is in the speaker is sufficient enough, but mm -hmm. I just I just had to go gangster on them and I use the software. <laughs> you know the arc software that you have? Yes. And literally, I'm in this room. This room is not treated in any kind of way. I don't even have up a panel. I, there's no wow. soundproof in it. In wow. my office where I do 90% of my post-production work mm -hmm. and... By the time I send it back to people, clients, usually they ask me, where did I mix this or if it's mixed already? And wow. no, they're, they're just off the MTMs. I use the <laughs> MTMs over 90% of the time. And I have five speakers, five pair of speakers sitting on my desk right now. But <laughs> the wow. MTMs so are the only one that I listen to. So that, that brings the question with so many different monitors. I mean, you got $5,000 monitors in there. You got some big boys in there and, and anything you could listen to, you could choose anything you want. What sets the MTMs apart? Why does it make it so much better for you? The MTMs, what sets it apart and why, what makes it um, better for me. When Early on when um, I got the iLoud micros from you guys and I went up to the office Mm -hmm. And um, I remember either talking to you or somebody else there, and they told me that they made the monitor in an imperfect space. Yep. So it's it was not me. like it, was, it wasn't all this like fancy stuff or fancy room. Like it was just like a room like mine where y'all guys um, calibrated the monitor, everything. So to me, that made sense because if you could get a monitor to sound good in any room, then you don't have a lot to question. You, mm, whereas mm, all these mm. other monitors they use like these big professional rooms you know what i mean like all mm -hmm, balanced mm -hmm. and, and, this <laughs> yeah. and that. so yeah. so when you take it to a room that's imperfect now then you're going to hear all the imperfections of the room yeah and that's what yeah. i think set the mtms apart i don't i don't i don't know if that's how you guys designed the mtm but <laughs> it, it is a much more improved version than the iLoud micros but the iLoud micros is still a killer though Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And when you think about 
most people out there don't have a treated room. So, you know, mo no, most people aren't sitting in a spot that's got uh, foam on the walls and everything's been treated. They only have what they have. They need to get the best sound they can get in that space. And the MTMs and the micros help deliver that, right? Absolutely, 1,000%. And the MTMs with the ARC even adds a complete different dimension to that. Yeah. So, so the ARC is great on the speaker itself. Um, how I collab calibrate it is I just plug the mic in. Um, I press one button and then that's that. Then I go to the other speaker, do the same thing. And it improves the sound quality because it basically listens to your room and tunes the speaker to your room. And yeah. then I took it a step further now and then I got the software and then I plugged it into my computer now. And then I, this is, this is this, just this room here. I don't do that anywhere else. <laughs> Everywhere else I take the speakers, I use it. I use the arc on the speaker itself. Yeah. Um, and trust me, I live by these speakers. I I am a thousand percent like a fan. <laughs> I know you are, man. I know you are. And, and I know a lot of super producers that, that want these huge monitors. They want this big sound. They try to mix super loud. Why is that not the best way to mix your mixes? And how come the all out MTM sounds so much better? Well, the thing is, what trying to use big monitors to mix is um, not good, just based on the fact that you can't like listen something loudly and make the correct judgment, because it's it's like it's, everything is just attacking your ear at once, and you get ear fatigue. So, like in terms of like me mixing now, I don't mix loud. Um, the level at which where I mix, you and I could probably hold a conversation because I don't mix loud. That um, low? Wow. Yeah, really? that low. Wow. Um, and the reason why for that is because you, 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 if you have an imperfect room like that I have, your speakers, you basically your room is an extension of your speakers. So you have sounds bouncing back off to you and stuff, and then sound is going to go crazy everywhere. So the lower your speaker is, you hear more of the sound from the speaker. Hmm. It'd be like if you're producing like in a doll like pro tools ableton whatever don't have your like signal slamming all the way into the red <laughs> because it has nowhere to go so you still have to make it breathe so mm. it to me it's kind of almost similar gotcha gotcha i like that i like that and and even for those people who want it loud at a, at 100 watts rms per monitor that a lot of mtms get fully loud do they not of course they get loud they're 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 you could um, probably do a little party with it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now, shake it down, shake it down. And, and what about yeah. the bass response? Is it clean enough the, for you? Do you get enough oomph when you when you're working with your bass tracks? In fact, in my room here, even though I have a sub, I don't use a sub um, because the MTMs, whatever bass that I hear from the MTMs, that's the bass that I need to hear. And then I use a spectrograph. That's how you say it, Derek. Ah, you got it. <laughs> you got it, man. You got it. You with me, brother. <laughs> and then I, I look at the signal and see like where the bass is at. Sometimes if I'm working on a song, this is early out, I will take like a song that sounds similar to whatever I'm working on. And then I try to match the levels or the, I use a spectrograph again. Ha ha. <laughs> and, then, and I think it's spectrum analyzer is the full term, but we're get there. We're right there with it. Yeah. Spectrum <laughs> analyzer whatsoever. <laughs> and, 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 you know which one I used to use a lot um, back in the day? The the one from um, T-Rex. Yeah, it has a great one. It has a great one in it. Yes. Yeah, and, most certainly. And I'm talking, I'm talking um, that one there, it, it, it will tell you if like the bass is too loud. So mm -hmm. a lot mm -hmm. of times the bass is the biggest issue. But right. if I can hear that bass through uh, the MTMs, like where I need to hear them, mm -hmm. and then to me it's not right. Yeah. If it yeah, and if it's what I like with it too is that um you guys have like this built in clipper. So yes. it's, it's like it clips. So yep. if I can't get the speaker loud, loud, loud without it clipping, then something is wrong with your bass. And I love that's it. what I love about them. I love it. And you were saying before, you know, you don't want to mix like you're at the club. You can't mix the gigantic speakers because you're not going to hear it properly anyway. So you yeah. want to mix it at a decibel where you can actually hear and, and distinctly hear all the frequencies in it. That's the best way to do it, right? Absolutely. So when I could understand like when it's a vibe, like they need to create and they're 
they're trying to simulate a club to get that vibe so they could however they want to do it. You know, everybody works differently. But the MTMs, they get loud enough to where you can create that vibe, but without piercing your ears. And I don't get ear fatigue from it. You know what I nice. mean? Nice. Nice. Yeah. 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 And we've talked about uh, recently, you know, you've been able to travel with the MTMs because you're able to arc any room that you land in. So whatever room you land in, you want to mix, you can take the sound you've left with you, right? And that's worked out for you. Uh, absolutely. So um, so normally when I travel, I used to travel with the um, the iLoud micros and those speakers were loud enough for um, people to call the, the hotel. <laughs> you um, was getting the, you, they was calling the police on you, homie. <laughs> <laughs> well, <clears throat> security, well, security. Would, Security, ah, that's the security. Your music is too loud. And those speakers were like this big, you know what I mean? <clears throat> so oh, the, M- you. The, the MTM now, so over like um, the year before um, last and last year, before um, the Rona hit, I used to take these speakers with me um, to these writing camps I used to have. So I used to just rent a house, invite a couple people over, and the MTMs were there. Everybody that heard, every producer that heard the MTMs while I was there, which I, you know what I mean, used the room correction mm-hmm. and all of that, all mm-hmm. of them bought it. Mm-hmm. Because they can't believe that's how good it sounded. Yes, sir. Also, yes, sir. No matter what room I'm in, I use the ARC system and I could, I get the same sound. Because mm-hmm. it just, Y'all, y'all, y'all outdid yourself now. <laughs> <laughs> we trying to get it right out here. We trying to get it right, and we and we really feel like everybody, you know, you you have a choice to choose whatever you want. You you've done the job. You've become successful. You can go out and buy whatever you want, but everybody can't. So we feel like if we can give the the regular guy a monitor that's also studio professional, ready to go, and let him take that with him at a great price, we've done our job. We we've, we've made everybody accessible to being able to be a great, a great producer, right? Of course. Um, and honestly, if these speakers cost three times the cost, I would have still bought them because that's wow. just how good they are. Wow. Not wow. even just because like they're affordable. Like it's, it's, it's great that you guys got it at the price point that you got it, but they're, they're how they sound. They, they sound a lot more than what they cost. Yeah. Yeah. And, and how easy is that calibration? I mean, you know, we think people think, oh, it's going to take forever. I got to be an engineer to set this up. How easy was it for you to just get up and go and make them work. The provided mic that it comes with in cable, you plug it in the back of the speaker, you press one button, and then you you position the mic first, and then it does whatever it does, and a couple <laughs> seconds, and you're done, and you do it to the other monitor, and you're done. That's it. And your room, it basically what it does is it analyzes the room, and then it just sounds greater. <laughs> <laughs> it's magic, man. It's magic. It sends out it's that magic. test wave. It's like a voom, voom, voom. measures all the frequencies in the room, saves it in the monitor, so you don't have any weird reflections, and boom, you're ready to go. Super easy. But even without it, the monitor still sounds amazing. You know? So yeah. yeah. It, I I'm I'm in love with it. Like I'm. <laughs> And see, I, I asked you before, I know you can't tell names, but I know you've had these monitors in front of tons of producers. And when you have had it in front of them, what's been their reaction? Are they like, yes, this is the one? Does everybody agree with you? Yes, the, the, because they. I'm talking like when they hear it at first, they're like, all right, sounds good. But when they listen to it afterwards, because it, it's just the decisions that you make. Because if you go into a new environment, you don't know the room, you don't know the space. A lot of times it will sound good there, but then when you put it in the car, you play it in your headphones, it sounds like crap. But <laughs> their reaction afterwards is like, yo, I have to buy those monitors. Because these monitors, you you, you just make better decisions right off rip. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, and we talk about that, you and I. You got to make smart decisions in the music. And if you're making decisions on bad information, bad sound, then it's going to take you longer to mix. So the NTMs actually shorten your time in the studio, right? Absolutely. Um, I always say this. I'm like, if you invest in something and it takes one step out of something that you have to do is worth the money. And the reason why I love the NTMs is because even though that is true, but it's not... 
a crazy amount of money for the sound that you're getting. Mm, mm. I love it. I love it. I love it. And man, you know what? I know I'm taking up a bunch of your time, so I won't take too much more. I just want to throw a couple small things out at you for the people that are out there watching FitNam. You know, if uh, they want to be a producer like you, you know, you've you've accomplished quite a bit. You've worked your butt off through the years. You know, maybe maybe what are the couple things you can uh, a, tip, tip, a couple tips you can give to people that are out there that are saying, "Hey, I, I want to get like Super Dudes. I want to get to that level." Where, where do they start? Work hard, stay humble, and don't be. Thirsty, like thirsty, meaning like you <laughs> hound people on IG. Listen to my trailer. Basically, work hard, make your music speak for yourself because this is what I learned. Hard work beats the talented that doesn't work hard. So <laughs> just always work hard, be different. Um, what is going to make you unique and stand out differently from everyone else? I love that's that, man. Say that, one, say that one more time. Say that one more time, because that's, that's good information people out there listening. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Hard, hard work beats the talented that doesn't work hard. Be different. <laughs> man, that's such good wisdom right there. That's, that's wisdom from the book right there, kid. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, of course, you being an IK fan, you know, you had talked also about using lurse and mashing as your secret weapon. Give a little bit about that Lurson and how that helps out for you. So, all right. So basically now you see like when I'm in my DAW and I'm balancing everything and I'm balancing everything, I keep it in the green. Like I don't go to the red because, mm -hmm. and then what I do now as like the last step after I do whatever I'm doing with the balancing and all of that sounds good. You know what I mean? Listen to my MTMs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and then a slap on the, I can't say the name, Larson? Larson, Larson. Larson, Larson. Mm -hmm. I don't want yeah. to say Lawson, not like the <laughs> <laughs> It's all good. It's all good, man. It's all good, for sure. So the Larson um, thing, and I just find one of those presets. It worked with it. Bam, bam. We good. Go. Because you've been losing Larson for years, man. For a long time. Yeah, absolutely. Man. I yeah, and that's Larson. Go ahead. I, I use a bunch of different things. And, and, and by the way, Lurson is an, it is an amazing mastering solution uh, that's built upon the principles of Gavin Lurson, an award-winning mastering engineer who's done tons of work. So you can look that up uh, on, up to get offline here and take a look at Lurson Mastering. It is a no-brainer for sure. I'm definitely going to look it up. I didn't even know that. I thought there's some name y'all done came up with. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. Gavin is an amazing mastering engineer, and we actually modeled his actual console that's in his studio where he's mastered movies, records, you name it. And we took a, a basically a complete representation of that thing, and you're using his console to master your stuff. So it's it's out of control. Oh, so that's why it sounds so good. <laughs> we we didn't just make that one up, man. That's actually a real console. So, <laughs> so that's just, a real thing. I'm just, I'm just being silly, Derek. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, man, you know, as always, it's always good to see you, bro. So, you know, is there, is there anything else that you can tell us is coming out next year that maybe we can be looking for? Uh, where the MTMs must be used on some of that stuff? What can you share with us? Hear what? Um... It ain't out till it's out, so I can't like specifically <laughs> tell you what is coming out. But I could tell you that everything within the last year and this whole year coming up, everything I use my MTMs for, every single thing. Ah, ah, that's what I want to hear, man. I sure do appreciate you just stopping by and sharing with the people at NAM. Everybody, I hope you've enjoyed the segment here with my boy Super Dupes. You want to give them some love. And uh, how can they find you if they want to hear more of your tracks or is there something they can, is there a website or anything like that they can connect with you or IG or anything um, like that? Just my Instagram is um, Super Dupes, S U P A D U P S. Um, that's, that's really it. Okay. I don't go on so Twitter much. Like, Twitter ain't saying nothing. Yeah. <laughs> I won't touch that nah. with a 10 foot pole, man. I was gonna go there, but I won't do it. I'm gonna leave yeah, it right there. <laughs> I don't have a TikTok. I don't you got my old school, man. So I just like to yeah. keep it simple. Yeah, it's just super dips and and you can check me out there and yeah, that's 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 it, that's it man. Yeah. All right, man. Well, hey, get some rest. Enjoy yourself, man. We'll talk to you next time. And uh, everybody that's enjoyed the segment, hit us with a like on our channel as you watch this stuff. And let somebody else know, NAM 2021 is going on. IK Multimedia has some great stuff going on at the booth. Hope to see you next time again. Hope you enjoyed the show. Talk to you soon. Take care.